I'm Alex with Redbeard Sailing, and today I'm going to show you how to put the Minicat 420 back into its bags. So the first thing that we're going to start as we get started here is, uh, is to pull down the mainsail. So we're going to release the bang right here. And this stays attached to the boom. You simply just unhook from right there at the bottom. <clears throat> I'm going to disconnect the main sheet here from the end of the boom. So we're going to release this and this just simply unhooks from here. There on this side of the boom is your out haul. We're going to release that, pull this line nice and, and loose, and you're going to pull this end cap out of the end of the boom. You'll now be able to remove this and the boom towards the front. Now you'll see what I'll do is I'll twist it and then pull down and that'll allow me to pull this out nice and easy without having to go forward to fiddle with it. We're going to set this aside. <clears throat> now we're ready to drop the mainsail. Minicat does change their line colors from time to time, so you can't use this as a template uh, for what your mainsail uh, is going to look like. But I'm going to release it off of this cleat here. And then as it comes down, you'll see it's going to come out of this gate. And it'll come down in a hurry, but you want to control it with your, your left hand or one of your hands, you wanna keep your hand on, the, on the, the halyard and just let it come down nice and gently. This can easily be rolled uh, with one person. So what you wanna do as one person is you take a nice big roll and you're controlling this bolt rope. So what I did was is I started here, got a nice big roll here, and then I curled it under using the, the bolt rope to twist. And you'll see I can get an actual nice little tight roll here. And then again, trying to, trying to manage that halyard as things come down and you're just trying to roll it as it comes down. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want to get it reasonably tight and then you're going to tighten it up once it's all the way down. At this point, we're just going to pull the rest of the sail down out of the track. I'm going to take this off and I like to kind of go just bring it down as I go so I'm, now I'm going to just start coiling this I'm just going to pull this all the way out of the mast what I'm doing here is I'm not twisting this around my elbow because that'll put a twist in the line I'm actually taking it and I'm just laying the, the line flat against itself. Once you get to about here, you got about two feet of extra line. You just wrap this around, try to lay the line flat instead of just twisting it. When you get down to this last little bit here, this last little, you know, eight, 10 inches, uh, you put your finger underneath and then pass that end, they call that the bitter end, underneath of that little gap that you made and that'll keep the lines tidy, but easy to release next time you use the boat. So some people take this bat now. I don't like to take the bat now, it's another part to mess with. So I fold the sail over itself so that this batten is parallel. So you're taking the head of the sail and you're just folding it right here so that it's, this batten is parallel to the next batten down. Now you take this, put this in like this, and I, what I'm doing is I'm making my hand real wide inside of the sail. So if you look right here, I'm, make, I'm just expanding my hand and twisting and holding this outside edge. And what that's doing is that's overall shrinking my sail. Something that looks a little bit like this. So I'm gonna sit this right here and I'm gonna grab the, the sail bag. And that'll be the first thing that we put into a bag. Now I load the sail bag, the main sail bag, battens first, which is a weird thing to say, but you'll see I'm gonna do the batten ends first. So try and maintain the nice tight uh, roll that you have here. Get that into there. And so all of this stays like this. It's gonna make it real easy to put the jib in next. So I'm gonna stick this right here. Now the next thing to come down is the jib. 
you check out our assembly videos. Um, I like to tie our jib sheet together so it's easier to sail single-handed. So I'm gonna untie that knot, pull these back through their fair leads. Now, I don't like the sails flapping in the wind. Um, it's probably not a good permanent storage for your boat, but if you're gonna, in between uses, what I do is I use the furler to spin this the rest of the way around the sail. And then, again, stick your finger underneath, create a little gap, just like this. We're just gonna do a little hitch, just like on that halyard to hold it nice and tight. I'm now gonna pull the rest of my halyard out of the pocket and we're gonna lower the jib halyard. And then just like with the main halyard, before I do the, anything else, I'm gonna reduce how many parts that I have on the boat. So I'm gonna create a nice little fit for this. Make sure you're not sending any knots up the sail, up the mast, because then you'll have to bring the whole mast down to retrieve the halyard. And... And then again, now that I'm like this, bind this up. Doesn't matter, you can find your preference for how many loops you want. You only need maybe four or five for it to really be effective. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna unhook the furler. So this shock cord right on the end, we're gonna just undo that carabiner and this comes free. And then we have another carabiner right here on the bowsprit at the bottom of the furler drum. So you'll unhook this just by pushing on the gate and releasing. Now I clip these two together. Just like that, which folds the sail completely in half. There is a wire in this luff. Um, I've been doing this for years and I haven't had any negative uh, effects, but probably not the best storage. You don't want to pinch this. Um, so I, I'm assuming, it, you know, that the because we have it furled, it's giving it a little bit of a curve, which is preventing the wire from pinching. Um, again, I haven't had any issues uh, for years of use, but um, probably not the best way to store your sail, but it, for setting up your boat, it does make it a lot quicker. Um, we're just gonna furl this up, or we're gonna stow this up, coiled. We don't have to like do anything crazy with it. This is gonna just go into this bag. And now everything fits into that bag, almost like it was intended to. All right, now we're gonna set this aside with our boom right here. We're gonna set these lines aside. Um, I am going to take the rudder off just to give us something that isn't gonna hit us in the shins every time we walk around the boat. These uh, I call little thumb rings. So you'll see they've got a little bend right here. And essentially what you'll do is, is you'll put your thumb on that little protrusion and then you're gonna basically push this little ring open. And then I'll show you again down here. You're gonna just push a little bit and that'll come right off. Now these pins come right out. I would recommend remove the bottom one first because then gravity will just hold this naturally. If you remove the top one first, it does make it a little bit more fiddly. Take that all the way off. Put it right here on the, tramp on the trampoline. Put those in, put it away, and now we're gonna sit here. I do leave the, foot, the tiller extension attached. I'm just gonna set that aside right there as well. The main sheet we're gonna stow. I pull this all the way tight, not super tight that you're hurting anything, but pull it nice and tight. And then you wanna create a nice little thing like this. Again, doesn't have to be anything crazy, just a couple of wraps. And then that little half hitch <clears throat> keeps it pretty. Next, we're gonna take the mast down. So this is, uh, we're gonna start with a four stay, which is how we release the tension on the rig. Um, I do this to stow my lines, basically you just split right here. The knot comes out, it releases everything nice and easy. Um, and then you're gonna uncleat this. Now, when this is uh, like this, now this is not how it is on the Instinct. Um, we don't sell a lot of Instinct, so this would be the boat we would recommend to you. <laughs> 
would be the emulsion all the way up to the, the 420 carbon. Um, so we release that all the way. You don't have to disconnect anything. They give you plenty of line. Now I can let go and the mass is just gonna dangle. It's not going anywhere. Um, you know, it's got, it can lean from one side to the other, but there's no sail up or anything like that. Um, but there's plenty of room there. So I'm just gonna grab this nice and high. I'm gonna lift up just a little bit. Again, you can't fall over because the rigging's gonna help you stabilize it and just bring it straight down. And now that I've got this sitting on the floor, I can grab the mast higher and I can just tilt it down and lay it on the trampoline just like this. And that's nice and easy. So now I start to, uh, now we're gonna undo a lot of this rigging. You really just start disconnecting everything. Just pull these off like this. Rotate the mast, pull this guy off just like this. These things stay on the wires, just like that. Now, as I'm done with the mast sections, I do take them off. So I'm gonna take this one off and just sit right here. I'm gonna bring this whole thing towards me. Take the middle section off and sit this right here. Now you've got this little Frankenstein wire set up. So this just pushes forward. This is when it when it's typically down, it's like this. Push it forward to these holes, pop that one out. Pop that one out until they're free. And then you're gonna disconnect the four stay right here. And then now the mass is completely off the boat. We're gonna set this aside and I'm gonna put these mass sections into their bag. Nice that they've got a nice segregated bag to put the pieces into. Now I don't pack the bag until the boat is completely disassembled because you've got some key frame pieces that go into each bag. So it is nice to put these into the bag and set everything aside. But we're gonna pack the actual boat bags at the very end. You can put the, the mast sections in any way you want. I do like to put the mast head towards the opening of the bag just because it takes up, it gives you a little bit easier of a push to get it into the bag. Um, but other than that, no big deal. All right, I'm gonna sit this with all of our other stuff back here where you can't see. All right, now it looks messy. I'll give you that. Uh, but we're gonna keep disconnecting. We've got this piece right here. And if you do run into where it's a little bit tight, you can use this to undo these. Some of them are a little bit harder than others, but not too bad. All right, so now what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna separate these. I've got the force mixed in here. It'll, look, it'll be messy just like this if you take it down messy. Um, so what you're looking for is you're looking for the piece that you remove from here, which has the two wires that come down together. You want to uncoil them from each other so they're not wrapped up, anything crazy like that. And they go all the way up to this bracket here. That They just have one joint up there. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from here where the two wires join together. And we're just going to make a coil, I would say, you no, know, maybe about eight inches in diameter. And it's just the same as that way that I was showing you. You just wanna give your, you wanna give the, the wrist a little bit of a twist so that you're not just wrapping these, you know, per se around your elbow. Sometimes you'll need to do a little dance to make sure that it doesn't get too too twisted up or if it gets twisted up when you put the boat together. But you're just going to keep coiling this nice and pretty until you end up with this on the one side. Now you're going to find that wire that has the double line and you're going to take one to two loops back out of it. Now you're going to take this and I'm just going to start wrapping this around itself. So go back through the circle you're not pulling it super tight, but you are pulling it snug against itself. And you go like this until you run out of, out of cable. 
And this ensures that you have a nice pretty piece of wire that's not gonna get pinched or wrapped or twisted or anything crazy like that. Now this side, because I have a lot less to get caught on, it's gonna always seem easier. But again, starting with this, I'm gonna start putting these together. We are gonna run into a little twisty twist. You're just trying to get these nice tight coils. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna take this piece. Now really what you're looking for is you're just looking to get at least three wrap throughs. And then once you have that, you'll end up with nice, pretty wires for your standing rigging, just like this. We're gonna set this aside. Four stay is the last of the standing rigging that we need to do. You just use another carabiner like this, unclasp this, so it'll be just like this, unclasp. I take this at full extension, and this is my, my loop guide. So I take my first loop just like that, and then continue to make these loops that same size. Pinch these together into a bind. And this should look familiar, just like we stowed the halyards. You might have to stop a little bit earlier because you got to fit this shackle under that little loop as well. And then you have a nice terminated line. Set that aside with your two halyards. Now it comes time to do the underwiring. Um, so this is real simple. Obviously, you can't get this off. We've tensioned this already. How do I get this off without undoing tensioning? It's really easy, you lift up on your trampoline and this lifts right out. And then this comes free. So we're just gonna put this right here for right now and keep it out of our way. Now, as my camera comes around here, we've got a carabiner clip right here. And so undo this one on this corner. Now, this is a new piece of hardware that the factory has put together. It is a, uh, it's a brace that prevents this dolphin striker um it's a new piece that goes underneath of the dolphin striker here so they typically have a carabiner um similar to the four stay where it's just a carabiner style shackle i have switched this out with a ronstan uh, piece of hardware that makes it so you don't need to adjust this turnbuckle every time you take your boat apart and put it back together so um if you do go with the redbeard sailing hardware upgrade kit um you'll be getting two of these which are real easy to install um and they make, you know, assembly, it, it cuts down on sometimes. So you just pull the pin here and that's it. Uh, we're gonna come over here and do the same thing on the other side. So this carabiner and then a snap shackle to release all of that. Now underneath of here, there's another one of those little thumb ring dings. Um, and so you're gonna do that. It's, it is a little bit blind. If you need to, you know, lift the boat up, you can lift the boat up and sit it on your knee to give yourself a little more space, but usually thumb and throw it is perfectly fine. And then you're just gonna pull all of these off and then put your ring ding back through the hole just like that. Now the dolphin striker is threaded on, so you're just gonna unscrew the dolphin striker or the factory calls it a stay bolt, and then that's done. Now all that's left for us to do on the wires are the two rear connections. And this will look very familiar. These are also snap shackles. So you're just gonna pull this key ring right here and it's gonna release. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. So just like this, you'll pull this ring and that will release. All right, now to put these cables away. So starting with the two bow wires, I come right off of the bowsprit. You just put these two together, you know, a nice, you know, three to four inch coil. You're only gonna get two coils out of it before you'll have to do this. And then that's nice and pretty. Now you've got this piece here. What I like to do with it is I like to fold it just like this. 
And this now becomes my end. The part that went under the stable or under the dolphin striker becomes my, my end piece. So we're gonna start with a coil here. Again, another three to four inch coil, just like that. Now these extend back farther. After I've got two coils in, these are gonna be what we use to hold the whole thing together. Just like that. Now these, I don't think really need much. <laughs> so these can go in the bag just like this. Set all of this aside. All right, now it is time to deflate our hulls and then we can remove the keels and take apart the trampoline. So to do, uh, to release the air on these hulls, they do have a Hulky Roberts valve. It's a push on, push off. So you'll turn this anti-clockwise to release the safety cap. And then all you're gonna do is press in on this red button and that will lock down uh, the check valve so that it releases air. We'll do the same to the other side. Take the cap off, press down. Now, at this point, this is where you're going to uninstall your keels. As the hulls are losing their pressure, although it's still holding some of the trampoline up. Um, so, I'm going to show you how to do that. So, what, we are, what we've done is we've pushed the boat kind of away from us to expose the keel. Um, and especially after you've been in the water, this is a real easy procedure. You can try and fuss with trying to pull it forward and everything like that. But if you grab the keel and you give it a nice strong jerk forward, you're going to release the rear one and then a strong jerk aft will release your keels. Uh, and then you'll just set these aside. Now releasing your hulls, uh, it looks like my jerk maybe have done it over here, but um, releasing your hulls from the trampoline, you take your hand like this full open like this. You may need to grab and give it a little twist and that kind of thing, but your hand just like this, you wanna go from behind and you wanna push. And then same thing over here, go behind and push. And that will take it off. Now we're gonna go to the front. Do the same thing. Hand wide open like this, push and push. Now that I have this off, we're gonna take the hulls and if we were in the middle of a field, we would have these hulls just laying like this. What you want to do is, as they're deflating, you want to make it so that your keels, just like keel strip on the bottom, you want it to be the bottom corner. You know, imagine it's going to lay completely flat. I want this facing the sky, but at the very bottom. We're going to remove the second hull. Just like that. pull this trampoline out of the way so I can lay this other hull correctly. Now just the weight of the fabric is going to squeeze almost all of the air that needs to be squeezed out of these boats. Plus it'll allow them to dry a little bit before you put them into the bag. All around it's just an easy process. All right, now we're going to do the trampoline unlacing. So this is real easy. You're gonna lift this up onto its end. It's cleated right here. You're gonna release this cleat. And you're gonna pull all these lacings all the way out on this back edge. So just grab the next lace and just pull it all the way through. Now that you have your back edge completely done, so that's off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this next lace all the way until I have, I don't know, about six inches or so of tail left, just like this. 
Now I'm gonna grab the next outside lace and I'm gonna pull that until it is a loose lace like this. It's a little bit of a bulge, maybe sits about three inches off of the, off the trampoline. Now I'm gonna do the next one and I'm just gonna carry that down. And what I'm doing is I'm working that whole, the slack from all that lacing, I'm working that down the entire length of the, of the trampoline. We got this right in here. We're just gonna keep doing this all the way down the line here. All the way down. Now I'm gonna grab these laces. I'm gonna pull them nice and loose. Yay, yeah, hooray. I'm gonna take this and make sure that none of this is on the outside of this traveler here. Now I'm gonna lift up nice and easy. Keep it with one arm. I'm gonna sit this on the ground next to me. Now this is the next easier one or the next uh, this is really the hardest one but what you're looking for is right here as I pull this out you want to make sure that this cleat is in this pocket so that you can just pull it up without it getting caught on any of the lacings kind of like this pull that all the way out sit this on the ground now I have this next piece again you want to make sure that this is rotated inside of the pocket here and then you're just gonna pull this one straight out. There's no lacing to get caught on, so once you get it started, it's easy to go. All right. So it doesn't matter forwards, backwards. I typically just like forwards. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the whole trampoline like this, make sure it's off of these, and the whole trampoline is inside of the two elbows. And you're just gonna start to roll this up. There's plenty of room in the bag, so it doesn't have to be a real tight roll. Just like this. So here's this, and this, and then your two sidebars right here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab the bags and we're gonna start packing the bags. All right, so for our first bag, we're gonna do the, I call it the non-trampoline bag. Because in one bag, you've got the trampoline and the hulls and in the other bag, you've got everything else. So the first thing to go in this bag is the, is the mast. So we're gonna put the mast right in the bottom of the bag, just like this. Stable to the dolphin striker, keep it right there. Just like that. Fits nicely between the wheels. We now have the boom, which can go in here. Just like that, between the mass sections our bowsprit can also go right in here. Now we'll take our side frame pieces and put them in just like this. It, I know it looks like we're going wider than the bag can take, but for some reason it just works. We're gonna go on the sides here as well. See how the, my cam my cam cleats for the, for the side, the side bars are over top of the mast. They're not up or poking sideways or anything like that. We are now going to take the keels and they create a nice little pocket right on top here for our mainsail or our sail bag. I really like the mini cat bagging system for sure. It definitely makes a lot of sense. Got our mess, or our, our uh, sail bag, mainsail and jib in here. Goes right on top like this. Now our rudder. Make sure that you've uncleated it so it can have a little wiggle to it. <clears throat> Just to go right on top. I don't have the hand pump handy uh -huh, uh, right now, so I 
I can't show you that, but that easily fits right here without any trouble at all. But this bag is done. So we're gonna close this up, Velcro it on this end, and zip it up. Just like that, I'm gonna sit this bag aside. second bag goes everything else. So to get us started, we're going to take the stern crossbar, put this in just like this, take your owner's manual and just stuff it in one of the ends. But just like this, nothing crazy. You can see it fits in there pretty nicely. I'm now going to take our trampoline with our front crossbar. That's going to come in here. Again, these poles facing upwards. And that creates a nice little pocket to put our rigging. For whatever reason, I've separated my wires from my synthetic lines. I don't know why I've developed this habit, but I have. So I put all of my wires in one end and all of my lines and the other. Now all that's left to go in this bag are the hulls. We have a video on how to fold the hulls, but I'm gonna go over that again right here today. Uh, let's start with this one down here so you can get a good view of it. So I'm gonna fold this hot dog style so that the top edge meets the, the bottom edge. like this. Take out all your little wrinkles so that the bolt, the hull is nice and clean and natural looking. Now what you'll do is you'll do your first fold right here at the at the end of this gray rub rail and the beginning of the keel patch. You can put your foot here, put your hand here, do whatever you want. But that's your first fold, just like that. You can squeeze any last, a little bit of air out, but it shouldn't be too big of an issue. Now we're gonna fold this just past the bow. So this bow gets folded over again. You can see the bow get folded back over itself right there. And then your last fold is right here. Now you wanna squeeze all the air out. You put a knee here then push this the rest of the way down. And then once you think all the air is out, push that button to seal it. And that hull's done. One more hole to do. sure everything's nice and pretty and then our first fold is right here again at this front strap just like that fold this key this bow over itself and then the stern one more time. Squeezing the last little bit out of the hulls. Push the button, seal it. First hull goes in like this, just right on top. We folded it this way so that the hulls are never on top of the metal. So no pinch points, even if you drop something or store something heavy on top of it. We take this hull, flip it upside down, 
it's going to sit in the recess. You can see that these heels or these stern cones kind of nest against each other. Just like that. This Velcro strap comes across and the top comes across. Just like that. Wheel it in for the final shot. There is your Mini Cat 420 in a bag. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time.